I'll put the camera on. Oh, huh? I'll put the camera on. Do you want to do it again? Yeah. Guys, could you maybe, you know. Just so you have to see this. Can I see it. Can that you was do a lot of later. Of that. I'm kicking the crap out of everybody. How is the scene so far already? Smash it. Get away. Get away. If you smash this, I might cry. Smash it. Smash it. I really want to see it. I'm going to see Steve cry. Do it. Just put the whole desk. Hold on. 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 Right? Will he be really upset? Steve will cry. Steve will cry. I've seen him. Yeah. Dude, I grow too. So you gotta do it yeah. in such a way that you just gotta go, what was it? And then you can get a little bit more. Of this is Sparky! I'm here. I'm here. I'm saying. Do you have a bad idea? 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 Do you have a bad idea?
first, then Sue's going to be something different. Right. Yeah, you're fine. Okay. No, Corey, I'm... Wait, wait, wait.
actually a law. I'm going to write it in this no. box. <clears throat> but before I do that,
so gross, but it's just a constant. So my final answer is 2 times the cube root of 2x. Alright, that's what this equal, equals. Uh, I mean fourth root, sorry. 2x. So why I went a little fast through that explanation because you don't have to do any of that. Because this guy Leibniz came up with a shortcut, so. That's why I left a box! Did you find the shortcut first and then we're like, hey, this is what this does? So, I know, I just wanted to show you kind of, if you didn't have this thing called Leibniz Law, what you would have to do, what, what Leibniz Law allows you to do is, you would have to take the integral of this stuff, plug in the 2x, plug in the 3 and subtract, Take the derivative of that answer, and what you get in the end is your final answer. But instead, Leibniz came up with this idea that if you take the derivative of an integral from one function to another, um, okay, so this says um, the derivative with respect to x of the integral of f of t dt from u of x to v of x. So the difference here between anything else that we've seen is your limits of integration are variables. They're functions. It can be constants, but you're going to see functions for this.
I couldn't read the board paper though. It's annoying. If she writes any further than your shoulder, I will push you off. Then let me do it. Okay, here's another way that it could be worded. Exactly blocking Luke's view and Steve. No, stay there. No. The first one I put up, that's one way to word this kind of problem. Find d dx of the integral of f of t dt. This is really You could also instead see it this way. If f of x, I don't know why they use capitals, it's just pretty common with this stuff. But if f of x equals the integral of this, find f prime of x. This is the same exact problem they're asking you to do the same exact thing. Do you see that? To say d dx of the integral is the same thing as saying, if f is the integral, find the derivative of f. It's asking us to do the same exact thing. So here's the mechanics of this again. We take the upper limit and plug it in for t. So we'd have sine squared x times the derivative of that limit, which is cosine, minus, plug the other limit in, and multiply by the derivative of that limit. Yeah. <coughs> so yeah, I can turn that into plus. Does this have any practical application? Not really. to what, plus? Yeah, I was about, I don't want to feel like writing it. Is that all for Lucas? That's all for Lucas. I don't feel like writing it. What? Mm. All right, so that's what Lucas Law is. It's just one of those little tiny things that's going to come up, and you have to know it. And then the second one is average value of a function. And it's also pretty straightforward. A problem's going to ask you, find the average value of a function. And that should tell you that you should find the average value of a function. Just kidding. But what average value is, is if I have a function from A to B, and I want to find the integral or, and I'm talking about the integral of that function, so I'm talking about the area underneath of it from A to B. Just the distance of both. What, every value? That's weird. I wish we were like more in tune. You have lunch with him. I'm going to talk about this. What are you talking about? Porn? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god!
that this is a I didn't pick a good spot, but that if I took like a bulldozer, like picture that the area underneath the curb is sand. And if I took a bulldozer and I pushed all of this sand into this space, it would fill it exactly. So that for every curve, for every area underneath of a curve, there exists a rectangle that that area fits exactly into. Wait, I don't really buy that. Well, it's totally true. Where are we getting the bulldozer from? I, that was trying to be weird. Whatever. Fix the photos. Let me let me give you a. <laughs> it's just like saying, you know, because area is measured in cubic inches or cubic feet, I can make a cubic or not not a cubic square, square inches or square feet. I can make a square that contains that exact amount of area, even though whatever. I can make a rectangle that includes that exact amount of area, and I can be exact about it. So like, there is some height along this curve where this area fits into that space exactly, and the area of this rectangle would be the exact same thing as the area underneath the curve. Okay. Well, maybe you better I was a little distracted, okay, from like five seconds ago. <laughs> says that there is a rectangle which is made by a height found by the y value of a certain x value that's between the end points of the area so that the area of the rectangle and the area of the curve are the same. This y value is called the average value of the function. No, what was I talking about? You guys? It's an awesome movie. Just kidding, we don't really. He usually talks about like hunting or something, I tune him out. Oh, changing the movie? So. <laughs> so, anyway, let's go through the mechanics of this. What If you had to say what the area of that rectangle is, the area of the rectangle is length times width or whatever, base times height, what's the height of the rectangle? F of C. What's the um, width of the rectangle? A, a, a. The distance from A to B, right? I'll call it B minus A, because B is going to be bigger in the picture that I have. <clears throat> so this is like height times width. And that's supposed to equal the area under the curve from A to B of F of X. So this is like the mathematical whatever representation of what I'm trying to say. That the area of the rectangle, the height times the width, has to equal the area under the curve from A to B. So if I want to find the average value, I take the integral and divide by B minus A. So if I want to find the average value, because the average value is just the F of C number, I just have to divide both sides of this by B minus A. The way it's usually written, instead of like the integral divided by B minus A, is we usually write 1 over b minus a times the integral from a to b of f of x dx. And this is just another, like these were, that's why I did these two things today, because they're both fairly easy, but they're things that people forget. That you'll see a problem, it'll say, find the average value of a function, and you'll like, be like, oh, this is all you're supposed to do. So like quite simply, if it said find the average value of um, x squared dx from 0 to 3, first of all, x squared dx from 0 to 3, we already know. What is that area? Nine. We know that it's 9, right? Can anyone tell me what, what is the height going to be of that rectangle? 
if the, the if the area under the curve is nine, and I'm trying to find the rectangle that has the area of nine, its width has got to be three. Its height then would be three. Well, it wouldn't be that high. It'd be down here at three. And I would have this rectangle would fit all this into there, and it would give me the same area. Whatever. But if I had to do that mechanically, because it's not always going to be that easy, all I have to do is um, one over. 3 minus 0 times the integral of x squared dx from 0 to 3. So 1 third times, we already know what this integral is, but if I didn't, I'd go through and do it. I already know that it's 9. I get 3. So this is the f of c value. This is the y value Oops. of that function. If they asked, so this is the, the y value, f of c. Where is C? If the y value is 3, where is this x value that goes with it? Plug it in. Y equals x squared is the function. Well, if 3 is the y value we're talking about, then that's when x is the square root of 3. Do you ever need to find that? I don't, I've seen a problem asking it like randomly, but not. not very often. Okay, so two formulas you need to know. You need to know this for average value, and you need to know how to do Leibniz's law. For homework, I took problems out of the Princeton Review book. Um, we don't have to do with them all, though. Oh, other questions? I'm sorry. I think I'm going fast because it's, they're simple topics, but they're not simple when you don't know them. Oh. Never mind, have an apple. <laughs> <laughs> So let's do like um <laughs> Let's just do number 2 and 4 last year what numbers? Two, four, five, six, and seven. Two, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Why was it? 